And hey, everybody, welcome to the Panthers Sports Report presented by the Milwaukee Brewing Company, founded on the principles of crafting and creating beers using the best local ingredients. Make sure to visit them today at either their location in the Arena District or the Third Ward. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the show. We are here high atop the Milwaukee Brewing Company talking a little Panthers baseball on this edition of the Panthers Sports Report. Panthers baseball coach Scott Doffick here. How are you, sir? Doing well. Doing well. Good morning. I want to get into, we're going to get into some individual talk, uh, individual personnel issues in the second segment, but I want to start with just some broad, broader things now as compared to the first show when you had a chance to sit down with Matt and just kind of set the, the big picture going into the season. Now that we're in the home stretch, basically, how would you characterize the personality of these guys? Each year is unique. So what's this year's character? That's a good question. I think early on in the season, we were just trying to get to know each other again. Um, coaches trying to get, get a feel for the personalities and the skill set that we had, not having last year really, um, and kind of a disjointed fall. Um, so there was a lot of learning going on, and, and I thought, uh, you know, the be beginning part of the season was certainly a character builder, and the team had an opportunity to, to come together a little bit and, and galvanize, and I think we did that, and we had some really exciting times there in the middle part of the season. Um, and it just seemed like a fun loving group that really liked to be around each other. And then the last couple of weeks has been tough. We, we just haven't played very well, you know, certainly banged up. Um, and I'm interested to see how we respond. Your guys, and you've talked about it all year, but they've had to grow up pretty quickly for, for a myriad of reasons. How yeah. do you think in general terms, they've responded in terms of those guys, those young guys growing up quickly? I think it's a work in progress for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, energy and effort and focus has been good on their part. Um, and I think you just have to be kind of thrown out to the wolves a little bit longer and uh, continue to mature. But I, th I think they've handled it fairly well, to be honest with you. Well, there's been a few factors that has forced the the, uh, the maturation of a lot of guys, but one of them is the way that the schedule is aligned this year in the Horizon League, having four-game weekend conference-only series, and you don't get the opportunity of that non-conference, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday game to give some of those young guys an opportunity. Yeah, it's an it's a interesting year in that way for sure. Um, not only with just the development opportunities, like you mentioned, but also just kind of the psyche and team morale. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you have a Tuesday, Wednesday game, it's easy to keep the whole uh, roster involved. Um, and it's been it's been tougher to do that up and down the lineup. You know, you look down the, the dugout and there's quite a few guys that just aren't getting opportunities to get in there. And and that's kind of the nature of the situation we're in. Um, it's not just our program, just about every program is going through it. Um, and so I, you know, I really like to foster a really, uh, you know, a collective team where mm -hmm. everybody's involved. And um, it's been tougher this year for yeah. sure to do that. However, with the amount of injuries we've had, we have had people have to step up and, and get in there and get some opportunity. How do you foster that team approach? Take us behind the scenes if you could. What do you do, you and your staff do to make sure that that morale and that character is high? It's a, it's a, it's not a necessarily an easy thing. It, you know, I think some of it is uh, very organic. Some teams and personalities that's going to happen naturally. But I do think that from a coaching staff, you know, treating the very best player who's maybe a fifth year senior to a walk on freshman the same, giving everybody those same opportunities and, and holding everybody to the same level of accountability, I think is one way to do it. Um, and then really just treating everybody good, just treat yeah. everybody well. Um, you know, we, we get to do this. Uh, we get to learn life's lessons and, and have fun around a great sport. And, you know, we're playing baseball here, so we got to have fun while we're doing it and trying to make sure that we're doing that uh, as much as we can. And at the same time, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a win-lose success business. So uh, trying to find ways to be successful at the same time. Who taught you some of those lessons on your way up the chain? Yeah, good question. We, we talked a little bit about that last time with Matt. You know, my high school coach, Tim O'Driscoll, yep. um, one of the all-time winningest coaches in, in uh, the state of Wisconsin in baseball and 
been the official score for the Brewers for God, I don't since I was in high school. I think. still doing it. Yeah, um, that's the one lesson I definitely took from playing under him was just the enthusiasm for the game and just every single guy, you know, from one to twenty was exactly mm-hmm. the same person, and he was going to treat him the same way. Um, and I think that does foster some of that camaraderie and that uh, that just everybody's on one end of the rope and let's pull it together. Well, and uh, in terms of your staff that you have here at Milwaukee, it's been pretty steady. I mean, you and, and Corey Bigler have been together for a long time, so I imagine that helps to play into that character and foster that, uh, that, uh, that personality of a program when you know you and your staff have that continuity. Yeah, that's the word continuity. We've been super fortunate. I've been super fortunate to, to keep uh, those guys around for a long time. A lot of times at this level at a mid-major, Sometimes this can be a stepping stone job and um, just super fortunate to, to have the guys we've had and, and keep them on board and because um, they certainly would have had opportunities and have had opportunities to move on and whew, very thankful. <laughs> when you look at the way the conference has unfolded this year and if you look at the preseason prognostications, sometimes they're spot on, sometimes they couldn't be any more wrong. 30,000 foot view, how would you handicap the way the league has unfolded this year? I think it's pretty much what uh, what people would have thought. I think the coaches poll looks almost exactly like what the situation we're sitting in. Um, you know, those things you can kind of take them as far as you can throw them for the most part. But, um, you know, the guys have been around and have a pretty good sense of where each program is at from a competitive standpoint and, and, you know, what I's and T's they're crossing and dotting um, to make sure that their, their program's gonna be well run. And that's the one thing about baseball is, you know, anybody can, can win or lose a game here or there, but you play so many games that usually the cream is gonna kind of rise to the top. Um, and where we're sitting right now, you know, the, the couple teams that are ahead of us, they're older, um, they're, they're um, a little bit more experienced and, and I think uh, it, it's showing up. We're going to take a quick break, Coach. When we come back, we're going to get into some of the names, some of the personnel. Uh, we'll kind of get through some of the infield and outfield and some of the pitching positions as well and get your thoughts on how they have performed this year out there at brand new, beautiful Franklin Field. We'll do that as we continue our chat with head baseball coach Scott Dothick right here on the Panthers Sports Report, presented by the Milwaukee Brewing Company. UW-Milwaukee was my first choice because it has a top business school. Because I wanted to go to a diverse campus with supportive resources. Because of its leading engineering school. Because they connect students with internships at Fortune 500 companies. UWM was my first choice. They have strong programs for health professionals. Because its green campus is helping me get involved in sustainability. UW-Milwaukee was my first choice because they helped me discover my passion for public health. Make it yours. Welcome back. Panthers Sports Report presented by the Milwaukee Brewing Company continues talking baseball here on this episode. And Scott Doffick, kind enough to join us. Coach, let's talk about some of the guys. And I know you and Matt previewed it more or less last time around, but now you've got a, almost a season's worth of uh, data on a lot of guys. Let's start with the pitching staff. Let's start with a, a young man that has come out uh, to be your, your Friday starter, your number one starter, a freshman lefty in Riley Fry. And you told me and a lot of people early on his pace, his tempo for a young man like that, so young at the collegiate level, I would imagine is kind of rare. And as you have said as well, he keeps you in ball games and he's done just that. Yeah, spot on right there. He's um, just a competitive kid. You know, he, he works on both sides of the plate. He works really fast. Um, he doesn't seem to get rattled. Uh, just looking at it yesterday, I think the batting average against him is about 265, which is, you know, about average, maybe a little better than average, but it's uh, like 202 with runners on base. So that's a kid with just big heart and guts, and, you know, he, he makes big pitches when he has to and definitely keeps his defense on their toes as he works so fast. He holds runners fairly well. Um, he has just a lot of those intangible things that you look for. When you were recruiting him, how did you identify those things? Boy, I wish I could say honestly that we knew all of those things. Uh, we, you know, we, we did really like the intangibles, but certainly better than, than advertised as we got them in here. So 
Um, and he's continually improved since day one in the fall. He works hard. You know, he listens. But, it, but there is an instinct to what he does, too. So, you know, he deserves most of the credit. I've had a chance to talk to him uh, on a, an occasion or two. We did a Milwaukee Minute with him uh, recently. And he seems like a, tell me if I'm wrong, a quiet, just kind of even keel kid, which is okay if you're a pitcher yeah. in this sport. Yeah, I don't know if quiet is necessarily right. He doesn't necessarily seem quiet to me, but he does seem even Maybe it was just the cameras that they could be. It could have been. Nervous in front we'll of the see, camera. We'll see. You know, he's a freshman. We'll see in <laughs> a couple right. years how, how he is. But he uh, he is very even keeled. And I think maybe that's why you see his numbers being, uh, you know, as good or better with runners on base. He doesn't he doesn't get over anxious. His, you know, the heart rate seems to be under control. And um, he just stays in the moment really well and, and, and executes. So you have him as your Friday starter, and in an ideal situation, you've got one of the top closers, maybe the top closer in this league, and A.J. Bluebaugh, another underclassman who has uh, really set this league on fire as a young man, as the league learns who he is, and he learns who the league is as well. It'll be interesting to watch his progression, A.J. Bluebaugh. Super fortunate to have him. You know, he, he, uh, he got here last year. He's a COVID freshman now. Um, just undersized, super thin, but just a really good athlete. Mm -hmm. um, when, when he came here, he was throwing sidearm, submarine knuckleballs and over the top and all over. And it was, you know, kind of a mid eighties guy. And um, he's put on 25 to 30 pounds already of good weight. Um, certainly has found his delivery and his release point now being over the top. And you see his velocity has went into the low to mid nineties. Um, and oh boy, the sky's the limit for him. I, I'll be surprised if that kid's not a first day draft pick at some point. How, how does the velocity increase, uh, that quickly in essence, uh, is it simply mechanics? Maybe yeah. it's the weight as well. What goes into that from a, from an X's and O's standpoint? I think if you and me knew the answer to that, we would be awfully rich, <laughs> but I, I think in general, you look for guys where their arm works really uh, works the right way mm -hmm. and his arm has always worked the right way meaning it unfolds the right way and his mm -hmm. arm speeds up at the right time his release point seems naturally to be out front uh, and he's got long arms and long levers which helps as well but you know it just I think it's a, a boy growing into a man you know he's getting stronger physically stronger in his core and his legs and and all that uh, you know if you can time it up right and repeat your delivery mm -hmm. will tend to start to lead into some more velocity hmm. You're saying we wouldn't be here doing this right now? No, nope, we not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's nope. work our way to some of the position players right now. Um, uh, you only have three seniors on this team this year, and uh, Mike Ferry being at third base. You and I have talked about him at length on, on our pregame chats during the broadcasts. But here's a young man that has really put a lot on his shoulders in terms of, I, I gather, what he expects his teammates to expect out of him in terms of setting an example. Yeah, he's he's went through a couple different situations here with his health. Uh, first an ACL, then a uh, uh, then he had a uh, a meniscus tear, which missed half of a season, and then uh, this year he's dealing with probably a, either a rotator or a labral tear tear in his throwing shoulder, and he's just gotten it out <clears throat> for one last go at it. But uh, he's given us everything that he can. Uh, both offensively and, and defensively. And I think that's uh, certainly infectious in the dugout to see that he's gotten it out and, and he knows we need it. So the teammates have picked up on that example. Is, is he a vocal leader or, or is what he's doing on the field and yeah. in the training room example enough? To, well, I think both. I think to be honest with you, I've seen the second half of this year, him pick up uh, more of the leadership role um, naturally. And he's a fun loving guy too. And so, you know, he, he seems like he, he's doing it with, um, with a smile because there is a, <clears throat> there's, there's some leaders that are, you know, get in your face and, and yeah. do it that way. Or there's some guys that he's just keeping everybody upbeat and lighthearted and pushing them. Uh, he's just doing a really nice job of it. Since you mentioned leadership, let's finish this segment on this one. Other than Mike, can you tell us about some of the guys that you have found really have stepped up this year in that leadership role? Yeah. Mitch Bubin, um, is uh, he's a guy that is going to lead by example, and that's going to be 24/7, seven days a week. You know, he just does everything right. 
uh, weight room, classroom, practice, mm -hmm. habits, everything. Uh, but also, he, he will step up and say some things here and there. Also, not a screamer or, or a yeller, but uh, you know he's he's motivating, pushing guys. He's done a really nice job of it. Interesting. We're, we're gonna come up on the last segment. I think about thirty seconds here. But uh, does that screamer yeller? Not maybe you don't have one on the roster this year. I don't know. But in the years past, does that work in baseball to be that type of a yeah guy, a captain, a leader to have that trait? Does that work in this sport? You know, I've had a guy or two over the years that would would uh, do that. Um, and then I've had a guy, a, a guy or two over the years that would do it at the wrong time. So I think when it's done right, and if yeah. it's done, um, there has to be a respect there, right? And, yeah. and if you if you don't overstep your bounds and you pick the right time to do it, I think it works really well. But it takes some instinct to, to do that. And I've had a couple guys like that. Um, and then I think I've had a couple that maybe weren't as good at, at knowing the timing. And oftentimes it helps if you then back it up on the field as well. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I mean it, it is really hard to yeah. to maintain respect if you're not playing, you're not producing. And and I, that's what I mean by the timing of it. Sometimes, you, you know, you get the guy that wants to, to motivate and scream, but he's, you know, he's the guy that's, you know, hitting 150 and, and not playing much yeah. on the bench. I mean, that kind of falls on deaf ears, unfortunately. It will only go so far in that yeah. case. All right, one more break. We'll come back. We'll continue talking baseball here on this edition of the Panthers Sports Report presented by the Milwaukee Brewing Company. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. Final segment of this edition of the Panthers Sports Report presented by the Milwaukee Brewing Company. That's where we are right now. And coach, let me just finish with a couple other uh, guys to have you comment on. And uh, you mentioned Mitchell Bubin at shortstop you, and Marcus Klein at, at second base. Uh, middle infield, always so important, up the middle in, in the sport of baseball. Um, characterize that dynamic between the two middle infielders, if you could. Well, Mitch is Mr. Steady. He's been, uh, you know, he's been with us now for four years, um, last year included. Um, and he's just been, he's just been locked down. He's really played a great shortstop for us. Um, and then, uh, you know, he's had to take Mike, or I'm sorry, Marcus under his wing a little bit at second base. You know, in the beginning of the year, we were, we were playing Ferry at second and Klein some at second and kind of eased into an everyday role for Marcus as his freshman season here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's a good ball player. He's just got to get a little bit more consistent. And I think being around Mitchell every single day will, will certainly lead to that. And I'm excited to have both those guys back next year up the middle. Um, I don't know if you'd say it, but I would imagine if there is a team MVP, Jack Kraus might at least be a nominee or yeah. a finalist, certainly. Um, his value to this team this year with the bat and maybe even more so with the glove, the way the catching position has been hampered by injuries has been pretty remarkable. Could not agree more. I mean, so some of the most impressive feats I've seen on the field were this year and just watching him grind inning after inning after inning with, with no other catchers behind him. Mm -hmm. um, and then hitting the four hole and be productive yeah. and really carried us for two or three weeks in the middle there. Um, just an outstanding job. And absolutely, I would agree he would be our team MVP if we had to pick one. Um, and I'm hoping we can, we can get him back here in a week and a half and pick up where he left off and uh, give us some more depth and have him back in the middle of the order, mm -hmm. which would be really nice. And then we'll just have you touch on the outfield situation because it's interesting, you know, playing in this ballpark, the Franklin Field, which is so cavernous in the gaps and, and we've yeah. seen it um, a, a number of times to have the speed you have with Seidel, to have the arms you have uh, as well are key. Kind of talk about the way the outfielding positions have played out this season. Yeah, Luke has been an everyday guy in center. He's done a nice job in, in center field. Um, you know, adjusting to this level is different coming from the junior college um, ranks. And I, and I think he's got a ways to go yet, but he's uh, certainly a toolsy guy. He runs well. Uh, for the most part, gives you good at-bats, got some natural bat speed. He's got to learn a little bit more 
on the bases and uh, angles in the outfield yet, but uh, you know he's learning for sure. Um, Nagulski's done a has done a nice job, and like you mentioned, arm strength. He's thrown out a couple of guys. Actually, won us a ball game with a with a throw out against Illinois State, and uh, you know he's sat in a three, four, five hole somewhere, and has been a run producer for us. Other than the first couple of weeks when he was out with COVID, um, and then left field has been a little bit of a uh, hodgepodge, a little bit uh, you know kind of mix and match. Okay, we have a few minutes left here uh, in this show. Want us to step back. Let's look at some big picture things. Um, when COVID is a thing of the past, and that can't happen soon enough for no. everybody, do you think there's anything, any takeaways to either your program specifically or to the college game? Anything that was implemented because of COVID that you think that might stick? We might still do that or the sport as a whole might continue to do that. Yeah. Well, I think one thing that stands out to me is in the recruiting, we've been forced to recruit virtually only. And so, you know, we're accustomed to going all over high school and junior college games. And, I, and we certainly will still do that. But uh, the industry was forced to go virtual so much that I think there's going to be options now to recruit a little bit more virtually. Uh, not that it wasn't there before, but I think you're going to see more of it because of um, um, just budget restrictions and the ability to save some money and travel. And and I also think with uh, the data and the metrics and uh, the capabilities with cameras now, you're going to be able to do a pretty good job of it. Um, mm -hmm. Never going to be as good, but you know, bang for your buck. I think it'll be. I think it's going to stick with us a little bit more. You're. Uh, we've talked off the air about this. You're rather eager to get back out on the recruiting trail in person. You and your staff, aren't you guys? Yeah, it's been <laughs> unbelievable. 14 months of really just phone calls and watching computer screens and, and hoping the guy you're talking to you can trust and the, and, and, and the little bit of video you have you can trust. Um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, to me, being able to watch players interact with their teammates and watch them in the dugout and, you know, actually hopefully show up and see them fail a little bit and see how they handle that. Like you, you rarely see a video of somebody failing because everybody wants to show you their best. Um, and, and the reality of the sport is you're going to fail an awful lot. And so how you handle that, I think, is sometimes more uh, informative than how you handle success uh, and, and when you're having success. So, yeah, just getting out there and getting to know people a little yeah. bit more rather than, you know, a, a phone call or an email or a video. It's going to be interesting. You're and saying you've, you've never seen a negative play on a kid's highlight reel before? Uh. <laughs> Not yet, but I'm going to stick with it. It's, I know it's coming. <laughs> Franklin Field has been such a blessing for the program, for the fan base, for the alumni. Um, I know how you feel about it. What have you heard? First, let's start with your players, your guys. What's been the feedback from your team? They feel blessed. I mean, it's just a great place. Like, you know, we walk in our locker rooms in center field and we walk in through center and it just kind of, smacks you in the face and it's uh, just it's just a beautiful place that the program, the alumni, the, the fans, the, the city, the state, everybody deserves mm -hmm. to, to have, you know, a venue like this and a, and a facility to grow out of where this where this program can really take off and flourish. You mentioned alumni. I imagine you've had a couple of guys come back yet to yeah, games few, this yeah. year. Um, what have they been telling you? I assume they're a little bit jealous, <laughs> envious that they didn't get a chance to play there. But what have you heard from the guys that used to wear the jersey? Same thing I just said. Just super excited, and and uh, you know I I I know you know firsthand and talking with some of them that uh, you know they feel a sense of of pride and that they were part of getting us to this point, and uh, I try to make sure that they know that that's how we feel because honestly, without them grinding and gutting it out, we wouldn't be here. Honestly, we would not be here in, in this position. And uh, we're not where we want to be yet, for sure. But we are definitely headed in the right direction. And, and uh, a lot of that is to, you know, is because of them. Yeah. And so I think it's just pride. I, th I think they sense the pride too. Well, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you've always taken a certain sense of pride in a <clears throat> in the blue collar um, mindset and mantra of 
your staff and every player that comes through that dugout. And do you at all, I don't know, worry is too strong a word, when you're playing in such a pristine place like that, and God bless the Hank, yeah. but that blue collar mindset, Yes. when you're playing in the best stadium in the league now, do you worry that that might, we might lose a little of that from the guys? A hundred percent. It's like at the top of my list of worries because, uh, you know, I think in today's society too, you just, there's a lot of uh, people are just expecting things, you know, to be given to them. And, you know, when we were at the Hank, nothing was going to be given. We were going to have to take care of it. We were going to have to pull the weeds. We were going to have to take the trash out. We were going to, nothing was pristine and perfect and beautiful and, and all those things. But at the same time, 90-foot uh, bases, 60-foot mound, uh, and another team coming in here to, mm -hmm. to kick your tail. And so you got to put that behind you, and um, hopefully that didn't wreck anything. You have to put that behind you and just compete. Um, and so that toughness that, that kind of resonates with playing in a place like that is something that we have to figure out how to carry over into, into a new place like this. Well, you will find a way. I, I know that, and I appreciate, appreciate the time, that. Coach. Thank you so much. Best of skill the rest of the way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, that'll do it. Another edition of the Panthers Sports Report. Talking a little baseball here inside the Milwaukee Brewing Company. We'll see you next time.